All right. Hello, everybody in Facebook land and Instagram land. This is Chef Ashley Shep. And tonight you are joining us for a Thursday edition of Cooking and Kicking It with Chef Ashley Shep. And that's just because we have the new year coming up. I wanted to give you all a break and I need a break. And it's my birthday tomorrow, so I'm taking off after that. Um, so we have a very special guest with us tonight. It's Nona Striscoll. She was with us before. And tonight she's going to help us with 10 things that we need to get rid of in the next 10 days. And I know that might sound like a lot. And I know the new year is before 10 days is coming up. But um, these are going to be things you can get rid of very quickly. They're not going to take a lot of your time. And it's a lot of stuff that you probably have been hoarding like my for a while. So as you are coming in, let me know where you are visiting from all over the world. And hopefully you've had a Merry Christmas and are looking forward to a Happy New Year. So I will go ahead and bring on Nona's. All right. Let me turn your volume up, girlfriend. All right, Nona's, how are you doing tonight? Hi, Ashley. I'm good. Happy almost birthday. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> How's um, How are things going on your side of the world, your neck of the woods? Yeah, they're really good. It's like 70 degrees every day. It's pretty nice over here. Okay, see, I didn't ask for all that. <laughs> it's, like 30, it's like 30 and raining right now here in Atlanta. So I put on a sweater just to pretend. Oh, okay. I appreciate yeah. it. Nice. You're welcome. Okay, so over on Instagram, we have uh, Mr. Foodtastic. He's joining us from D.C. Hey, thanks for tuning in. We have The Sweet Life of Stephanie. Hey, how are you? Healthy Foods 42. And on Facebook, we have Vicki from Maryland. So um, I was just telling them a little bit about how you were going to help us get our kitchens together. We have a few days before the new year, and it's kind of one of those things where we don't want to take in extra crap and extra stuff with us into 2019. And people say this every year, like, oh, I'm going to declutter, <laughs> and I'm going to get rid of stuff, and then we end up with piles and piles of things. So yeah. um, I will listen to your direction and chime in, and we also have some things we're going to show you all. Um, as well to help you to know what really you should keep and what you should donate or toss. So Nona, take it away. Yeah, you also mentioned there are fewer than 10 days till the new year, but some of these are so easy, you can do them in literally two minutes. So you might do two or three a day, but if you want to do one a day, you can get yourself into a pattern of getting rid of things. That's a great habit to get into. Uh, okay, the first one, super easy, and that is takeout menus. So I say keep three or four maybe of your favorites from your favorite places. It looks like I have about six. So I guess I need to declutter a little bit. How do you feel about takeout menus, Ashley? Okay. I got mine. We keep ours yeah. on the side of the fridge and one of these little clips. Um, and as I was looking at them, I'm thinking we only use this one in the front. So I don't, and I, we order the same thing every time we go. So, or every time we order. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I was like, we order from here, but we get the exact same thing every time. Like they right. even know what we're going to get. So. Right. So I don't even need to look at this. And then half of the time, if I want to make a change, I'll just look it up online on their website. So definitely something we can toss or recycle if it's paper. Super easy. Super easy to get rid of, right? Yes. All right. Check. One thing though. <laughs> Okay, this the next one that I have on my list. We're gonna Ashley's gonna give you a printable so you can print out all ten of these and just go down and check them because I know some people like a list. Mm -hmm. But the next thing on the list are storage containers that don't have a front. So if they don't have a lid, all mine okay. did have a lid because I just throw them away. But if and you we, have, so obviously yours are gonna have lids, making us look bad, but that's fine. <laughs> Anyway, guilty, but if you have any, look in your Tupperware drawer and instead okay. of trying to make it look like a magazine or something, just match them up and get rid of the ones that don't have lids. And usually if they don't have a lid, you just have to recycle them. You can't donate those. Right. Yeah. Um, and these are actually going on with the to-go menu situation. Um, these actually fit inside of each other. They give these to us for soup. So like when I get a cup versus um, a bowl of soup. So I like to keep these. And then um, I didn't tell you, but I actually showed people on Instagram what my uh, meal prep container pantry mm -hmm. situation looks like. And it's a mess. And <laughs> if theirs looks like that, they need to come on. And so if you just need to start over and start from scratch, these were about $2 at Kroger. 
folks on Instagram. Um, they have them at other places. They're plastic. They're dishwasher safe. They're microwavable. Um, if it's something that you feel like you just want to be done with the whole thing, then definitely consider that. And then also um, Pyrex. I love the glass containers. Me too. They keep food fresher longer, similar to mason jars. And um, the only thing I don't like about them is they take longer to heat up. But if you leave it out a little bit before you're about to eat to reheat your stuff, you'll be fine. So yeah, they're also they're also way better for the earth. The glass ones. So right, if you're into that, yeah. get the glass ones. And that was that's smart. What you just said that like your whole thing was about two dollars or something. You said mm -hmm. for a pack of five of them, they were yeah. So remember that when you're looking at all these and thinking, um, oh, I don't want to throw these away. Just remember, it was only about you know thirty cents. Don't beat yourself yeah. up about it. Just recycle them and let it go. Yeah, and um, if you know any teacher friends, they always love these little containers. If you don't want to use them for food, um, they're good to store markers in, crayons, glue sticks to put on the um, kids' tables. Or if you want to donate them to Goodwill or Salvation Army, though, more than happy to take those as well. As long as they have a lid. Oh, for they won't take them without a lid? For Goodwill, they won't. Oh, I mean, oh, okay. they'll take them, but then they just throw them away. Gotcha. Okay. So, Didn't know that. But... You're right, like for teachers, and even sometimes if they're a really sturdy one, not this one, but some of the, like these Rubbermaid ones are really sturdy, and if I lose a lid for these, sometimes I'll use this to organize something like in a drawer or something. I use it as a drawer separator okay. sometimes. Usually, though, if they lose their lid, I say goodbye. Okay. So. And I just realized for the folks over on Instagram, you can only see me. You can't see Nona, so I didn't think about that. <laughs> Um, if you want to tune in with us, you can definitely go over to um, Facebook and go to the Chef Ashley Chef page. We're streaming live from there. Or I will post this um, in IGTV if it will let me because they sometimes don't let me. Um, or I'll post it on YouTube. So, either way, thanks for tuning in. You can stay or you can head over to Facebook. Sorry. Okay. Back to you, Notice. Oh, that's fine. So let that... The um, to-go containers leads me into another item on the list, which is all of the crap that comes when you order food for takeout. You get chopsticks, soy sauce, sriracha, I have Chick-fil-A sauce, which is delicious. And, uh, you know, I have some delicious things in here, but um, you really don't need as much of these as most people have in their house. Mm -hmm. I say um, a good rule is to get a mason jar or a cup. This is just a pretty cup I had, and I... Once this is full, I stop collecting it because really we hardly never use this. I might even throw away all of these and just kind of start over because when you order the food again, you get it again. And if you feel like if you're going to eat it at home, sometimes I even tell the um, people on the phone when I'm ordering takeout, um, I don't need all that stuff. Don't give me any napkins or plastic forks because mm -hmm. I have it all. And then I just yeah. feel bad throwing it away without even using it. But I'd rather if you throw it away without using it, then keep it as clutter in your kitchen because you don't need all those plastic forks or soy sauces or anything. Right. So. And that's a good point. That's a good way to use those um, plastic containers. And mm -hmm. a lot of times, if you know you're not going to use them, you can actually ask the people at the restaurant to not give you that packet because then it yep. creates more waste for them. And then also they are um, more likely to be okay with that because it's saving them money. So it's not something that's really going to um, – it's going to be helpful to them. So Something yeah, but, but for our 10 day challenge, 10 day, 10 item challenge, my challenge to you is to go through and find where you have the ketchup. So maybe it's in your car, maybe it's in, you know, a drawer, maybe it's in your fridge mm -hmm. and just get rid, of, get rid of most of it. Really all of it. Just trust me. You're not going to use it. Okay. I have a giant <laughs> bowl in the pantry that I need to get rid of. <laughs> I believe have, what do you have in the, in yours? Um, not Chick-fil-A sauce because I drink think Chick-fil-A sauce is gross, but my in-laws love it. Um, we have, we are a barbecue and honey mustard family over here. Um, ketchup, sriracha, Asian to-go packets of duck sauce, the mustard sauce I never ever use, um, soy sauce. And actually one time those soy sauce packets came in handy because I did not have um, soy sauce. So I had to take about five of those packets and put it in a dish. But other than that, I don't ever use them. So totally. that's what, yeah, that's what I mean. You can keep, you know, you can keep, I got about, 15 things in here and mm -hmm. so that's going to be fine if we go on a picnic or somebody we run out of ketchup or something i'm right. we're covered but any more than this is just taking up space exactly. you don't need it all right so 
so my next item I was going to ask you about actually, Ashley, mm-hmm. since you're the chef or that's, and that's knives, knives, okay. nice knives, because I think most houses that we go into to declutter, they just have way too many knives and I've right. read different places, how many you need. So I'm going to ask you, okay. how many do you need? That kind of depends on your cooking style. Um, if you know that you are never going to be not carving, if you're ever going to be, yeah, I guess carving fruit. Um, then you don't need a paring knife, which is a teensy. And I didn't even take it out because I wasn't going to show it to y'all because you don't need it. Um, it's like a right, it's a very teensy knife. You just use it to um, peel things. A lot of people just use a veggie peeler and are done with it. And you don't have to um, do that. And you're less likely to cut yourself. So I like to use um, a really good serrated knife. This is Cutco brand. I love Cutco. Um they're really high quality, they're surgical, great steel. And then I also use a Santoku knife, which is pretty good on a lot of different things. Um, it'll cut through potato, raw potatoes, onions, it, you can slice, dice, you can do pretty much everything with it. Um, and then, not actually a knife, but actually um, kitchen shears. These are yeah. a, pair that I ha- or a pair that I have from Cutco as well. And I love these because if you are trying to cut meat, it does really well. Um, if Even if you're cutting veggies, it's a good option too. Um, so I would say get ones that are kind of your go-to. So probably have about three or four um, in case, three or four to cook. Obviously, you're going to have your other knives that are um, for mm-hmm. what you would be eating with. But right. in terms of cooking with, probably just three or four because you're really not going to need too many beyond that for a day-to-day purpose. Yeah. So, I mean, every kitchen I ever go into to declutter has way more than three or four knives. So that's something um, people watching, you can think about decluttering your knives in one, on one of these days. Right. Okay. Another thing that I, that I said was um, reusable shopping bags because they're, you know, since those came into effect, I don't know what, five, six years ago, whatever, everybody, you get them everywhere because you forget. Mm-hmm. And so, you buy another one for how much are they? A dollar or something? And yeah. then almost every kitchen that I go to, they have about just way too many of these mm-hmm. reusable bags. So I say keep ten for each car that will go to the store, and keep them in your car. Right. About ten. That's for a family of four or five. So that's a lot. So if you have a cabinet or a drawer that's filled with these, or they're just laying on your kitchen floor. Mm-hmm. Consider putting them all in one bag, put them in your trunk, get them out of your kitchen. Right. That makes sense because obviously you're going to need them when you're at the grocery store, not when they're in your kitchen. Um, I know a lot of people will save those, um, the plastic bags, and then you just have this giant yep. container of 50 million plastic bags. Yep. Um, and I know for us, like you can use them for like the bathroom trash can or if you have babies for like dirty diapers and that kind of stuff. But yeah. Those are definitely more eco-friendly for your groceries. These guys, right? And then you can wash those too if you need to. Yeah, if you get the if you get the canvas ones, which I like, the kind that they yeah, you can wash them. I have um, one of these. I wasn't gonna talk about this, but I have this. Um, you know, it's just from Target or something that holds all your single-use plastic bags. I try to never get these, and I still get them. You know what I mean? Like I've been yeah. telling people no bag for about five years, and I still get them. So they just multiply and multiply. So if you have some kind of container, you can use this or even a, a Kleenex box. Okay. Put them in there. And when that's full, I mean, you only need about 10 or 12. I have too many right here just because I'm never going to use all these. Right. Um, yeah. So if you have a container, just put them in the container and don't cram them in there full. Just keep about 10 or 12 and take the rest back to the store to recycle them. Right. Another yeah. thing. Another thing that's easy to get rid of because there's no, like, you didn't pay for them. There's no emotional attachment. Mm-hmm. Just let them go. Right. Let them go. Makes sense. Let it go like Elsa. Let it go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's see. What else can we talk about? Um, what this, about those? Do you want to talk about the gadgets? The kitchen gadgets? Yeah. Okay. I was going to say this one is kind of hard. This is like an advanced one because I say on the list um, kitchen gadgets that only do one thing. Mm-hmm. And as I said that, um, my daughter and I were thinking, we have quite a few kitchen gadgets in the kitchen that only do one thing, but they are things that we do every day. Like my kids right. love this guy, the Apple. That's what thing. I pulled out too. <laughs> I know. because And they really do use this 
almost every day. So if you have something like this that they use every day or that somebody uses every day, it's okay to keep it. Right. You know, and something else to consider is that you don't have to use this just for apples. Right. Um, you can use it for eggs to slice them that way. I've seen it on kiwis as well. It doesn't have to be um, just, or even like a sandwich. If you have kids and they don't like the crust, you can use this to kind of cut the oh, crust nice. off of it. That would be a cute sandwich. Yes. And then it'd be the lots of size triangles. For anyway, but the things I'm thinking about are like I've seen blenders that are just for making margaritas. Yeah, no. yeah. just yeah. use your blender. Right. You know, um, if you have a toaster oven and a toaster, mm -hmm. you can get rid of the toaster because anything you could do in the toaster, you can do in the toaster oven. So I'm talking about especially big things that you have in the kitchen um, that only do one thing. Really think mm -hmm. about letting those go, donating those because. Um, they're just taking up a lot of room unless yeah. you use them every day. Milkshake makers. We find all kinds of stuff that you can just use a blender for that. You know, you don't need a right. blender and yeah. a milkshake maker. Yeah. So if you're watching live um, or if you're watching the replay, let us know if there's something that is a yeah. kitchen gadget that you feel like you can probably get away with getting rid of that you probably don't really need. So, yep. Yeah, I'd rather hear those than the ones that you're like, but I love the the um, strawberry core. I use it every day. That's great. Tell us about the ones you you don't use every day. Right, yeah. Because, I mean, there are some things that are um, dependent upon your family. Like, if your family really likes, like you said, the apples for you, um, then, okay, that makes sense. That was an expense that is worth it, and it's worth the space. And something like this is not taking up that much space. Um, right. But I picked up something else that I have. This is, I don't know if you can see this. Ooh. So, like, yeah. cans, uh -huh. which this is so unnecessary. Like, there's no reason... <laughs> Why do you even yep. have this? Because you could easily just use the top of the can to drink. Yep. So this could be something that I could um, give away or um, donate or to, I don't want to toss it because it's plastic. So I probably would give it away to somebody else who might. Um, yep. I get this out. This is a pizza peel. <laughs> and like this takes up a lot of room and you can, it's hard to find a room for this in the kitchen. Right. And so if you don't make homemade pizza a lot. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and you're trying to find room in your kitchen. That's the kind of thing that can go because, um, yeah, you could use you can use a cookie sheet or something to get out. The that's pizza. like some next level pizza making. That's the kind that they have at like we have a place yeah. your pie which does brick oven pizzas, and that's what they use there. And we we used to make pizza a lot, a lot, a lot when the uh -huh. kids were smaller, and but we don't use them that much. But anyway, I also have a pretty big kitchen. Ta da! Yeah, <laughs> but we're anyway, zoomed in right now. But yeah, you do have a nice kitchen. So yeah. Okay, and so there's other things on the list. Do you want to talk about any more, or what do you want to talk about? Um, I think this has been pretty good. I don't want to overwhelm people, and mm -hmm. I also want them to kind of take action and do some of the things that we've talked about. Maybe let's pick one more. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one I think is pretty easy. Um, cookbooks that you have never used, that people have given you. Okay, this one is the best cookbook ever. I love this cookbook. We use it all the time. Mm -hmm. This one... On the other hand, <laughs> not as good. Right. <laughs> this was like in the Atkins phase, like the no carb. There's no carbs in this mm -hmm. book at all. So I'm ready. To, I'm ready to let go of this one. You could use it at the doorstop. Around yeah, I'm just gonna donate that. <laughs> but there's another one that I ha that for a while I saw in every single kitchen. It was that um, Jessica Seinfeld. Um, cookbook about sneaking vegetables into food to get your kids to eat vegetables. I can't remember what it was called, but I decluttered about 40 of those wow. from every kitchen we would go in. I'd be like, have you ever used this? No. no. Bye -bye. I mean, nobody ever used it. So obviously, every, no, everybody had it. Their kids are not <laughs> eating vegetables due to that book. <laughs> That's yeah. the point. Cause I know, um, especially like me, people will give me food based gifts. Like um, my father-in-law gave me, and I love it, so not, I'm not going to toss it. But um, he gave me, like, a recipe memory book. So I had a place to put in um, the recipe the last time you made it. Um, and then little pop-out cards. So if I wanted to share a recipe with somebody. Um, like, that's something that's, like, a keepsake that I would keep. But there's definitely – it's kind of like we just collect cookbooks. And sometimes people just put them up in their kitchen to look yeah. like, I cook. Like, look at this on a stand or whatever. Yeah. Which is fine <laughs> if it's part of the decor. But if they're stacked up and you're not using them, they, they do take up a lot of space. Yeah, a ton of space, and they're easy to get rid of if you're really honest with yourself. It's hard to get rid of books, yes, but if you're if you're looking for a, some big bang for your buck, mm -hmm. cookbooks are a great way because 
everything's online and because usually most people use about one or two cookbooks. Right. And a lot of times we make the same recipes. Um, mm -hmm. And another thing, if you don't want to get rid of them, like if you don't want to give them to Goodwill, you can always um, sell them on eBay or there's other online stores or Amazon will take them as well if you want to be a seller on there. However, yes. to me, the time and the effort that that takes, you could really just pass it on to somebody else in your family, possibly, like how people do with um, family generational recipes, family-based recipes, or yep. just donate it to a Goodwill or Salvation Army. Yeah, or your local thrift shop. I, I mm -hmm. always say that the, the when you're decluttering, when that is your goal, the, then make that your goal, not to find the perfect place for the thing to go. Just get it out of your house. Okay your goal right now you know I mean it's great to find the perfect place for it to go but um, that holds a lot of people back so I like to be careful about telling them um, to find somebody who will use it just let it go and let the person who's meant to find it at the thrift store find it that's a good point because we do kind of get <laughs> emotional attachments um, yeah like right now I have boxes in the basement that are like keep for when I lose some weight because I don't want to get rid of it and then I have like donate and then I have um not trash, but just I need to find some like a thrift shop or something like that. And it's been sitting there because I have not found a thrift shop to give it to in our area or like a consignment store or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it's good to just think about, okay, I just got to get rid of it. Even if I yeah. put my trunk, that's a step further than it'd be. Yeah. Else, so, yep. I put it right in my front seat because then you remember that you got to go by the thrift store on your way home. Anyway, you got to call a professional organizer in Atlanta, Ashley. I know. Oh, you need to fly in and come help me out and get the situation together. <laughs> I'll have to check that out. All right. So um, we are going to sign off for the night. We will put the link for the checklist for you in the comments. And please let us know if you have any questions for Nona or I will be checking and commenting in them as well. If you are watching the replay, please click. I mean, please do hashtag replay. And if you know somebody who is looking to declutter and not to call them out, but if you think that they are maybe trying to to be less, not commercial, but I know a lot of people are trying to have more experiences and less stuff. And so if you know somebody that's doing that, please definitely share this with them, tag them on it, or just share it with them that way. So yeah. Are you doing, I'm doing a um, clutter challenge for the new year. So that'll be on my Facebook group and then on my YouTube channel too. It's called get organized already. There's a okay. clutter challenge you can do um, for the whole month of January. Um, so you can check that out too or tell your friends about it. Okay, I'll go ahead and put that on the screen as yeah. well. So they can just go to your Facebook page and it'll pop up. Yep, I will and I'll I'll put it in the comments too. Okay. Perfect. So if you want to check that out. And if you want to hear more from Nonas, we will be continuing this type of thing with us um, throughout twenty nineteen. So let us know what kind of topics that you're interested in hearing about or seeing us discuss. Um, I know that I've done a kitchen, uh, not kitchen, a fridge, like a before and after of my fridge. Is that something that you do as well with people? Yeah, we do fridges and pantries. Um, yeah. Okay. I have a, I have a couple of videos in the clutter challenge. We do one day is the fridge, one day is the pantry. You know, we do, we kind of go through the whole house. So. Okay, cool. They're so not just limited to the kitchen. All right, nice. So, yeah, that might be something that you can see from us together. And then we might have some people come on and show us. If they're brave, show us their before and after of their free. <laughs> so. Yeah. All right. Well, it was nice talking to you. You as well. Have a happy new year. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Have a good one. Thanks. Good night. Bye.